So people often ask me what I do or to explain what I do. And, and my mom's asked me like 11,000 11, times. But I like to tell them as a joke that I create artificial intelligence. But really, it's kind of artificially stupid. Um, and it's true. Uh, there are numerous, numerous examples from IBM's Watson on Jeopardy to walking robots that are foiled by Pop-Tarts. The field of AI is replete with examples of AI gone wrong. And you don't have to work in the field of AI for very long to develop a deep appreciation and respect for that which is natural intelligence. Uh, the beauty of it, the complexity, it really is a remarkable thing that we all carry around in our heads, right? The fundamental problem that we have is that the AI and analytics tools that we're building think in a different way than people do, right? There's a disconnect between the AI tools we're creating and the way that people approach the world. A good example of this is driving a car, right? Something probably most people in this room have experienced doing. So imagine that you're in your car and you're driving down the road, right? And you come up to an intersection and you decide you want to make a right turn. So you go through that mental decision, right? And then you go through the physical process of turning the wheel and the car starts to turn. Then all of a sudden, a pedestrian crosses the street right in front of you. Now, you don't just keep doing what you're doing, right? You don't just plow right into them, hopefully. <laughs> Some of you guys laughed a little too loudly. Um, no, you change what you're going to do. So maybe you change your turning radius. And upon doing so, you, f you may find an entirely new obstacle in your way, right? Maybe a tree or a fire hydrant or maybe a parked car. And so you have to change what you're going to do again, right? And there's this whole sequence of events, this whole sequence of decisions that you have to navigate in order to act intelligently in the world. And based on that probability of you know, that sequence, you, you, may not, you may choose not to uh, turn at that particular intersection at all, right? So the, the amount of traffic or your prior knowledge of the number of pedestrians, you may choose to take an entirely different route. It's not about whether turning at that particular intersection is good or bad. It's about sequences of decisions. It's about understanding the way the world changes over time. It's about understanding how the things we do now and the consequences thereof change what we can do in the future. And in order to best assist us, our AI tools need to reflect that thought process. It's not simply about option A versus option B, or is treatment X better than treatment Y? It's about sequences of decisions. It's about understanding the way the world changes over time, and being able to adapt to that in real time, just like you're driving a car, just like Google Maps works. Many of the great advances in human history have largely been about taking what previously seemed to be complex and making it simple, right? So a good example of this, keeping with our theme, is your car, right? So the way your car works, the way the engine works, is based on something called the Lagrange equations, right? That's the math you see there up on the board. Now I guarantee that the auto mechanic who works on your car probably has no idea what any of that means. But he can still work on your car. Why? Because we've taken the complexity and we've made it simple. We've compartmentalized it. We've turned it into components that can be plugged together and taken apart. It can be used to build, create, fix. 
And in the same vein, in healthcare, and healthcare AI, and healthcare analytics, we often have these models, these algorithms, right? That maybe tell us something about the way certain clinical processes work, or prognoses of various treatments. And a lot of times we get lost in the elegance of the math. We get lost in the art of solving the problem without ever really solving the problem. But if we can take these models and parse out from them patterns that tell us about the way the world changes over time, about how patients change over time, and then we can push those patterns into simple interfaces that let patients and providers see what to expect in the future, what we find is that with real patients, that we can both improve the quality of healthcare while simultaneously reducing the cost. In other words, we can make healthcare better and we can do it more cheaply at the same time. All by understanding the way the world changes over time and by building tools that reflect that. Not surprisingly, in other fields, people have come along, these people, <laughs> and have taken what previously seemed to be complex and they made it simple. All by pointing out the critical importance of time and understanding those phenomena. Now, I also build robots, so. Um, and it's not just about making better decisions. It's also about having better information. And newer technologies, like socially assisted robots, these cute, furry, cuddly robots, are essentially walking sensor suites that we can put into people's homes that come equipped with sensors for light and sound and motion. And they can collect that information in an interactive way, in an engaging way. And they can provide portals into people's everyday health, their activity levels, their sleep patterns, their diet, what's actually going on with people on a day-to-day -day -day basis in real time, all without retrofitting people's homes with sensors or other smart home technologies, all by giving people something they can play with. Because the reality is health is not something that happens two or three times a year when you show up at the doctor's office. Health is something that happens every day. It's happening right now. It's an accumulation of choices. It's an accumulation of lifestyle. And simply having a snapshot of that a few times a year isn't good enough. We need to be able to understand how things change over time, how health changes over time, how patients change over time, in real time, and be able to feed that information back to the clin clinical decision makers so that they can do what they do better. The story of human civilization has largely been about taking the things that we previously had to do physically or in our minds and pushing those into tools in our environment, freeing us up to focus on higher level aspects of the task. Even the uh, first act of chiseling something into stone was really an act of cognitive offload, right? I don't have to remember it. I wrote it down right there in that rock. And things like notepads and calculators and computers have all just been continuing chapters in that story, the story of mankind, the story of human civilization. Some people fear AI. They fear it's going to replace people or force us to do certain things. And you hear Vino Kostla talking about robot doctors and Eric Topol talking about uh, cyborg clinicians. But the reality is AI is just another chapter in that story, the story of mankind, the story of civilization. It's all about helping us do what we do better. You know, I remember as my grandparents got older and they got sicker, as 
most of us are one to do. One of my grandpas had heart issues and another one had Alzheimer's. And I remember, you know, you take them to the doctor's office and the doctor would tell you to do this or that and then they'd send you on your way. And you'd go home and you'd hope, maybe pray, <laughs> that it would work. But you didn't really know. Maybe it worked for 60% of people, but maybe it wouldn't work for you. And it was scary. Being a patient in our healthcare system is often a very scary proposition for patients and loved ones alike. And the reality is that we know more about your car ride via Uber or your table reservation via Table Me or what you're most likely to buy on Amazon than we do about whether the treatment you've been prescribed is actually going to work. <laughs> That's not good enough. We can do better and we should do better. For me, AI is not simply about creating cars that drive themselves or robot doctors that diagnose autonomously. It's about empowering people. If we can see more, know more, beyond the constraints with which we were born, then we can do more, evaluate our options, know what to expect, better understand what lies upon the horizon. It's not the things in life that are comfortable, but those are challenges which define us. Thank you.